How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good, Seth. I'm Ross. I'm the master of Scotch for Pernod Ricard. Nice to meet you, Ross. I'm the Pleasure to meet of you, folks. Too. Here in 67 wine. Excellent. Today we're going to be starting out uh, tasting a few of the products in the Pernod Ricard portfolio. We're starting out with the Glenlivet 18 year old. Okay. This is an 18 year old single malt from the Speyside region. Uh, up until the age of 12, this is aged exclusively in American oak. What you're going to find after that is about 20 to 25 percent of the product is shifted over at the age of 12 into uh, sherry barrels that use both French and Spanish barrels that used to house sherry. It ages up until the age of 18, then they're married for about six weeks, mm -hmm. then chill filtered uh, and bottled. So what you're going to get out of this one up front is definitely a lot of natural sweetness, caramel, honey, vanilla, butterscotch, a little bit of toffee. Uh, in the center, a lot of natural spicy tone. A hint of a, on the roof of the mouth, a little bit more of a charcoal grittiness, kind of a, almost like you get out of a bourbon. Right. And then in the finish of it, it definitely on the sides mm -hmm. and back of your tongue, a little bit more of a dry, oaky and nutty finish to it. All right, let me take it, let me take a sip. Oh, for sure, the caramel right on yeah, the nose reminds me of the beginning. Pops. Like you said, the roof of your mouth, it does complete charcoal. Mm -hmm. I think it's some spice in the back. It's mm -hmm. really nice. It's a beautiful product, really and, nice. and the beauty of the Glenlivet line is um, <clears throat> customers can come in, and it's typically a 10 to $15 difference in bottle cost, going from the 12 all the way up to the 18. So it's very easy to progress in people's scotch sure. knowledge, and then without breaking the bank, try a wide variety of scotches uh, with different expressions. So. Let's see if we get anything else in the second set. Okay. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's very smooth. Excellent. Glad yeah. you enjoy. The next one we're doing is actually the Chivas Regal 18-year-old. The reason I'm having you do this one next is because this actually has a lot of very similar tasting notes. So in the Chivas Regal 18, it is a blended scotch, a combination of anywhere from 20 to 40 single malts and about 3 to 5 grain whiskeys. Uh, it has about 85 different tasting notes you can pick up on, depending on how well-rounded your palate is and um, what you're pairing it with, all that kind of situation. A little sweetness right off the nose. Exactly. Uh, you will get a lot more of a, a peated smell to this one than you got in the Glenlivet because there is the influence of the Isla single malt in here. Mm -hmm. However, it's a lot more complex as well. There's a lot more going on. This is one I would recommend adding a drop of water to if you care to. It does change the complexity Why is it with quite Chivas? a bit. People, a lot of times, add it, especially Chivas, mm -hmm. there's a lot of water at Not a lot of water, but. Uh, I think it's twofold. Number one, people see it as a drink that their father or grandfather drank. With and a little water. Exactly. Right, My dad always it. drank it on the rocks or with a you know, drop of water or sure, something. Sure, sure. And that's what changes their opinion of it because, right. well, dad did it, so it must be right. Right. Um, and then the other thing is people kind of see it as an older person's drink, which, as you're tasting, it's not. Uh, it's actually an unbelievable product, extremely well-rounded, and same cost or price point as uh, what the Glenlivet 18 is. Okay, great. So it gives you an opportunity to have an extremely well-rounded scotch for a very low cost. Mm. Okay. Now the next one we're going to do is the Royal Salute 21-year-old. Now the beauty of this one, Royal Salute is actually a product that was created initially for Queen Elizabeth when she was coronated Queen of England. She was 21 years old, and it's also for the 21-gun salute. It's been made every year since she's been queen, which, as we just saw a few months ago, is the better part of 60 years. Right. Okay. Um, they make her drink the whole bottle? No. Strangely <laughs> enough, they didn't. They should have. Uh, uh, this bottle is actually blue, as you can see. Um, there are also, in other countries, you can get a green and red bottle. It's to signify the emeralds, rubies, and sapphires in the royal crown. Okay. Thanks. Now, uh, this is a blend, once again, anywhere from 20 to 40 single malts, uh, about 3 to 5 grain whiskeys. This has a little bit lighter tone overall, but a lot more of a natural spice. Kind of hits the center of the palate uh, a little bit more aggressively. Sure. Now, the addition of water in this one takes away that natural spicy tone and brings out a little bit more of a well-rounded citrus tone. If you think grapefruit and lemon, right. kind of pops out and makes it a fantastic summertime scotch. Unbelievable food pairing with a sushi, if you're a sushi mm -hmm. fan, or great with any kind of a shellfish or a softer bodied uh, white fish. It's funny, I never actually thought of sushi was with, with scotch, but if I was going to do it, this is, it's light enough where you could actually mm -hmm. do it. And it tastes great. Last but not least, we're going to do the Aberlauer Abunda. Now, Aberlauer is a product line that's made in the same vein as your McAllen's and Balvini's. You're looking at about a 60 40 ratio of sherry to bourbon cask. Okay? Now, the major difference here the Abunda uh, is actually Scotch Gaelic for the origin. The story was about 30 years ago, Aberlauer went to tear down. Uh, or they were expanding their distillery, they tore down one of the walls, and inside the wall they found an original bottle from the first batch of Aberlauer ever made. 
They opened it up, started drinking it, and loved it so much, they gave it to the chemist and said, figure out how to do this again. And then through about three or four years of reverse engineering, they recrafted the recipe as close as they could possibly get to that original bottle. Wow. It was a cast strength, non-chill filtered expression, as this one is. Every batch is slightly different. This particular batch is 118 proof, so there's a lot of fire to it. But when you take an opportunity to add a little bit of water, it brings out a, a depth like you'd get out of a Brunello or a Malbec or a very deep body Cabernet. Tons of deep uh, red, almost black fruits, plums, cherries, currants, dates, a lot of natural spice as well. It's almost like a, um, like a cognac. I mean, yes. It's very, there's really a lot going on. Very much so. Wow. And because uh, yeah. this is aged exclusively in Oloroso cask, it brings out a lot of that deeper tone. Right. So if you care to, feel free to add some water. If you're enjoying it this way, well, feel I'm free to enjoy. It. I'm enjoying it this way. Okay. Hmm. Let's add some water. See what it okay. tastes like. Much water, probably. That's cast strength. I think you can get away with it. <laughs> Definitely tones it down, yeah. but it's still, it's amazing how drinkable it still is. Yeah. It's not like it's even watered down. It's, it's exactly, like, and the beauty of this one is it comes in in the price point between 60 and 70 bucks, so it's very easy for the, the customers to be able to try something different when the new batches come in. Um, it's very easy to sample something. Interesting. Tell me about the coloring and how it works a little bit. Okay, now the major difference is here. Uh, what you're seeing in, uh, specifically in the Abunda here, uh, obviously it's a much deeper tone. This is aged exclusively in the Oloroso cask versus what you get here if you compare just the up to the light, right. the difference between the Glenlivet versus the Aberlauer. The Glenlivet up until the age of 12 is exclusively the American oak and then only about 20 to 25 percent of it is the sherry finish later. So what you're going to get is a much lighter tone, a little bit more of a natural sweet tone um, and that's where you're getting a lot of the color. Okay. It comes from sitting in those different barrels. Got it. Thank you very much. Very informative. Thank you, sir. Pleasure. Thanks, great stuff.